A lot of the UFO sightings that people experience are like man-made crafts. Oh my God, that was weird. Run. Guys, Dang. what was that? I'm scared. No, we're in LA, babe. It didn't last long at all. Was that a sign? I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, they keep shoot going. me down, shoot me down. I don't give a shit, girl. I still have to pay my taxes whether <laughs> aliens exist or not. So. Right. Right. I got a podcast. I to the, I to the, no, no, no. <laughs> Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode of I'm Literally Screaming. Ah! Oh, my God. Everybody in the stands are throwing their clothes off and they're throwing their shirts off and their underwear and their thongs. And Jesus Christ, we don't want to see that, guys. Or maybe, maybe we do. Maybe we say screw it and just free the nipple today. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, hi everyone, it's me, Spencewa, back with another episode of I'm Literally Screaming. Today we have a very special guest. This is two, uh, or yeah, two musicians in a row. We have the one, the only, Jordy Music with us today. However, before we get Jordy out here, I first need to react to some stuff. I actually am reacting to a Reddit thread today that I will be reading for the first time. So, uh, let's do a little segment segue into Spencewa Reacts, shall we? Okay, everyone, this is an anonymous advice question from Reddit. Um, and this one is called, I had sex with my straight best friend. <laughs> okay, right, okay. I'm a 26 female bisexual woman. My best friend, let's call her Liv. I met 24 female Liv last year through a mutual friend. And from the moment we met, we have been inseparable. We have connected in a way where I haven't with anyone else before. We have bared our souls to each other. Liv and I would have sleepovers all the time and cuddle up on the bed and didn't think anything of it because we were best friends. Everyone did think we were a couple, but we assured them that Liv was straight and we were just friends. I did cheekily. Oh, okay, wait. So are they from the UK? I heard cheeky. Yeah. I did cheekily ask her one day if she was sure she wasn't a little bit bi and she joked and said only for you. Ooh, now this was now is written in all caps. This weekend past was my birthday. I was far from sober and same with her. We were in a bathroom at a bar and both started drunkenly talking about how much we mean to each other, ECT. Uh, she confided in me that she was worried she was a bad friend and I assured her that was not the case in any way, shape or form. We had a cuddle, a cheeky peck, and that was it. We ended up going to a few more bars before heading home. We got back to her place and got into bed and started cuddling, then started kissing. I was really caught off guard and asked her if she was okay with this, and she said that she wanted to. It was getting pretty heated, so I kept checking in on her and asking if she really wanted to do this, and she kept saying yes. Long story short, we had sex. Next morning was fine. I asked if she was okay, and she said yeah. I put it all down to it being a drunken hookup. I spent the day there because we were both horrendously hungover, and we acted like nothing had happened. I ended up spending the night again because we had fell asleep in the late afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, once again, we were cuddling at night and it happened all over again. Now, I obviously can't put that down to a drunken hookup because we were sober. So that's me had sex with my friend twice now. As far as I'm aware, that's our first time with a woman. We are acting completely fine, still talking as if nothing happened, but I can't help but feel confused and worried. I don't know what to do. Do I talk to her about it or do I just pretend that it didn't happen? I'm low key freaking out. Holy shit, we have a lot to unpack here. Um, um, wow. Okay, girl, let me, let me set the stage for you. Um, this is your friend. Uh, I personally do believe that if this is someone you want to keep in your life and you want to have her in your life, uh, then you should talk to her about it because if it's affecting you in some type of way, then I feel like the only way to find any type of resolution, um, or resolve is to talk it out with one another. Um, I mean, Hey, I make out with my friends when I'm drunk, but we don't hook up and have sex. And you guys did that both drunk and sober. Um, and I feel like anybody, especially if you guys are best friends and you're really close, um, I feel like if anybody were in that situation, they would want to have answers, especially if they were hooking up and having sex with someone that is supposedly straight. Um, 
I'm not saying that your friend isn't straight. Uh, I respect your friend. I respect you. But I don't think that this is something you should just ignore, uh, especially if it happened twice. One time, maybe drunk. Sure. I would just like let it go. I'd be like, OK, let's act like that didn't happen. But then you guys did it again fully sober. Um, and yeah, maybe you were hungover, but. I'm sorry, having sex while hungover, that's crazy to me. I actually cannot move when I'm hungover. I'm catatonic. So the fact that you guys did it while hungover, clearly there's something there. Um, because if anyone tried to touch me while I was hungover, I'd punch them in the face. Um, you guys fully had sex, which is crazy to me. You know what I mean? Um, like maybe if you guys were sober and you guys did it and it was just like one thing, but no, you were hungover and you guys still did it, which is wild. Like I can't move when I'm hungover. I have a migraine, uh, the world is spinning, I feel like I'm dying. And somehow you guys managed to have a little freak session in there. Something about that feels a little uh, worth questioning, in my opinion. Like I feel like you should definitely talk it out with her. And if she's like, hey, I was just trying something out this on the third, if you're okay with that, then fine, keep it going. But if you're like, hey, I think I might actually like you after that experience and we might need time apart, Hopefully, as a good friend, she'll be like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll keep my distance from you. Um, just hit me up when we're good. But I haven't had this happen to me, thank God. I've made out with friends while drunk, sure. But, like, I haven't had sex with them. Um, so, so yeah, it sounds like you're in a pretty sticky situation. Um, I really hope you guys figure whatever it is out. Uh, if your friend does come out as bisexual and you guys end up dating, I really hope that the relationship goes well or whatever it might be. And if you guys just decide to be friends, I really hope there isn't any like awkward tension between you guys because even when I kiss my friends while I'm drunk, sometimes the next day we're like, wait, did we really do that? Like, did we really just make out on the dance floor with tongue? That's a little weird. Like we're, we're really good friends. And then it's like, wait, no, we're friends. But again, we haven't had sex. Like I'm not going around having sex with my friends and you fully had sex with your friend, not to make you feel bad, but like you fully had sex with your friend. Like, come on, you need to talk about it, girl. Uh, yeah. So that's my advice and that's all I can say right now. Um, but if you have a therapist, I recommend you talk to them too because there's only so much Spence Walk can do for you. Guys, it's time we welcome today's guest. I'm, I gave my advice, I, I said what I had to say, but it's time we bring them out here, you know what I mean? So today's guest is an iconic musician who has toured across the US with sold out shows, headlined Pride Festival, oh yeah, I, yeah, I saw you at Pride, um, work bitch, and has over 100 million streams, and earlier this year released his second album, Boy, which is amazing, uh, I can't wait to talk about it. Everybody, welcome Jordy to the show. Everybody's screaming, they're shouting, and they're taking off their clothes, and they're throwing them on the ground. And Amanda, like, stop getting naked. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. I love throwing Amanda. Though. You smell so good. What fabric softener do you use? Wait, really? Yeah. I feel like I'm not using, like, good fabric softener right now. I feel like it's, like, generic. Like what? Snuggies? I don't know. I literally don't know. I use, like, Snuggies. Mm. Wait. You smell like you're, like, a really good... Like, when oh I was God. little, I had this, like... um what's it called, like morning care teacher. Mm. And her name was Miss Kathy and she used to smell me all the time. Oh. And she used to be like, you smell really good. What kind of, what, she'd always have to be the, the kind of detergent my mom used. And now you're like looking back and, and you're like, like hmm, she smelled me a lot. No, she like would sniff <laughs> me a lot. But oh. like she was like close family friends. Like okay. her and my mom used to work together. Um, so then when she started working there, I was like, oh, gee, no way, that's so cool. But like she would always ask me the detergent my mom. And she had these really long nails. Like these super long nails, and she would like scratch your back for you. And she was oh. like, so, Oh, you're looking at me like that's like not something that's <laughs> No, I went to it Catholic sounds school. great. I love it. It, it. it felt really good. And wait, so was it snuggy like detergent then? Like, was it the same? Like, do you use the same fabric softener that your mom used when you were little? Oh, that hell yeah. It? Okay, okay, gotcha. Because yeah. it just smells good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I'm really sorry mm -hmm. if my breath smells like straight up coffee. I've been having coffee all day long. No, I'm, I haven't gotten a whiff. Like, it smells like, it smells great in here. I'm like, you smell yourself. Yeah. The last time we were here, I had like a whole, I had like two Celsius drinks. Oh, and, you're, you were shaky. Oh, when I got home, I couldn't go to sleep. And I, cause I forgot that I had the Celsius. I could not sleep. And I went to bed at four in the morning. Oh my God. Celsius is not one to be trifled with. Yeah. I had one yesterday at the airport. It felt like needed. Where did you, where were you? I just had a family wedding out of town. So I was coming back from North Carolina yesterday. It was two flights. Um, so I needed a little Celsius and I just, I, I do get the shaky shakes. But they taste good. 
I used to drink Celsius like before I would run, but then I was like way too much. I also got like dehydrated really quick after mm, I have Celsius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how was the wedding? How was your weekend? Oh my God, the wedding was good. I had just come back from a writing camp last week. I was in the desert writing songs last week. And then I hopped on a plane, did a family wedding. How was the desert? The desert was good. It was hot as it was so were you hot. like in a tent or were you like we, there was like a big house that like it was like seven artists seven songwriters and seven producers and we like were going like in seven rooms like each day with like different combinations of like writers producers artists it was really cool um and we were there for like five days and we like wrote a bunch of songs and it was really fun that sounds crazy yeah no super fun do you enjoy writing i love writing do you have like a it. journal I have like my notes and like my Google Docs. I don't, I'm not the kind of writer that keeps like a handwritten journal. I don't write lyrics by hand. My hands would like be in so much pain by oh, the end of the I session. Have a handwritten journal. See, I, and I respect that. And I wish I could be like that. But I it's wish a I journal. Could. It's that's not like, true, I'm, it's that's not like true. I'm writing lyrics and then I'm like scratching it off and I'm like, oh, this is, doesn't work. It's exactly. Like, I just like I'm writing down my thoughts. And I, I love feel like that. lyrics is like it's easier to backspace and scratch out and 100%. It also looks cleaner. It looks cleaner. Like, Sometimes it's actually kind of sad because like you'll delete the process and it would be cool to look back on like how, how you got you started, to it. Exactly yeah. how you started. But sometimes you just like push like the ideas that you don't use to like the bottom of the Google Doc and then you keep all the lyrics at the front. But um, but no, I love writing. I love I love performing. I love writing. I think they both offer like really unique uh, uh, feelings and experiences when it comes to like making music and like experiencing it. Yeah, I like I like written poetry, but that's it. Like I had friends who are who write me well, yeah, but like I have a lot of people who are like in the music industry mm. and I I don't know. I feel like I can write a skit, but like writing a song that's like cleverly written and like like what's there's a song called um I think it's called like Cry Over You. Okay. And it's like like the play on words. It's, it's a play on words yeah. where like yeah. I'd rather cry over you mm -hmm. than, than cry, cry over, over you. you. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I was like, holy shit! Like that that makes so much sense. But if that if I was asked to write something like that, like you you'd have there'd be no song. I bet you that song is written in Nashville because it's actually like a very Nashville kind of thing to like do the like double meaning like play on words at the end of the chorus kind of thing the fact that you know that like i wouldn't even know no i it's, it's like i feel like they're the songwriters out there are like very clever in that way i don't know that just like screams nashville to me but i i love that no play on play on words is, is great and i think you know i mean i look at people like you and i'm like i couldn't write skits like how you do it i don't know we all have like our own things you know yeah some of us are just like really good at other things like that, you know like we're just some of us are better at doing things than others mm, yeah Absolutely. Oh, I love gay people. Oh, me too, babe. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. You toured across, like, the U.S., right? Yes. Where did you tour? What states? I, like, name every state. I mm -hmm. mean, a bunch. Like, okay. A lot. Well, like, what, what's your favorite state and why? Ooh. Like, that you visited on tour. Mm. You're like none of them. No, I'm like it's it's actually really hard to choose. I always say I love going to DC. Um, I like the venues there a lot. And I had an old music director who was in my band, and he's from DC. And we'd always like stay at his house where he grew up, and we would like go to the monuments at one in the morning and like scooter around. And oh. it's kind of just like fun, like making memories. The food is really good in DC. Um, and yeah, the shows are always like super fun. But I also I love going to New York. I obviously love playing shows in LA. I'm from Chicago, so I love playing a hometown show in Chicago. Like Grow, you grew up in Chicago? I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always the kid that's like, I'm from Chicago. And people are like, where? And I'm like, the suburbs, not actually the city. So. No, I, but, I mean, like, I I usually, when I say I'm from New Jersey, I like, it's like New Jersey. Exactly. I, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the Chicago area. Yeah. Um, I was surprised by a couple of cities on this last run. I had Columbus, Ohio. Very cute. I've very cute. Columbus, Ohio. Lots of gay pride flags. Lots of, you know. Oh, I don't like them. No, <laughs> we, we don't like them I over here. I don't like those. Mm -mm, you, no. can, you can take those flags <laughs> Then you, you stay away from Columbus. Yeah, well, if I go to Columbus, you need to take down those pride flags. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really appreciate you guys. Yeah, no, I, I felt very uncomfortable. It was very scary. Uh, the only, I, I was going to say, the only time I've ever been to D.C. was on like my eighth grade field trip. Oh my God, yes, iconic. Yeah, and I got yeah. in a lot of trouble there too. What did you do? Um, I was teaching my friends how to whip Nene and twerk at the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> 
And I was like, my teacher was like, Spencer. And I was like, what? Like, I was also valedictorian in middle school. So mm. like at the time I was supposed to be working on like my valedictorian speech. Um, and I remember my one teacher, Mrs. Lortz, love you girl. Mm. Um, but she was like, Spencer, do you think this is how valedictorians should be representing their class? And I was like, I don't know, girl. Like, I don't know. And, and you're like, look at me now. Yeah. Well, look at me now, Miss Lortz. She was a sweetheart. Oh, she was okay. really old. I used to, well... I used to get in trouble a lot in our class too. What would you do? <sighs> there was like I was talkative, and I I went like I went from Me going too. to Catholic school to like public school. So when I first started going to public school, I was really really good. Mm. Like I wouldn't talk in class. Like I was very quiet. But then I was changed. Public oh. school changed me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And absolutely. I was like, screw it. Like I'll just whisper a little bit here and there. I like got in trouble too in middle school mostly. I would do like cartwheels in class. Oh, I used to scratch my back against the wall. Oh, nice. Yeah, the corner of the room, and I would get in a lot of trouble. But Fun fact, it was my algebra teacher, Mrs. Morton. Love you too, girl. I had a, I had a Miss Morton English teacher. Really? Just funny. Oh my God. What if it was the same person? Double life? We, we, but you grew up in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, she, she could have just been like running. I don't think that, forward. I don't think, they, I don't think she could do that. Okay. Well, two Miss Mortons. Oh yeah. But Miss Morton, I used to scratch my back in the corner. Like she had like a, it was like a closet that stuck out of the wall. So mm. like there was a corner open and I would scratch my back against it. And then for Christmas, she ended up getting all of us back scratchers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Do you still have it? No. Oh, it's somewhere. But I'm a trendsetter. I oh, I love been. that. No, I honestly, I feel like it's weird because I look back on my like middle school experience and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I definitely had like an era of like misbehaving. And I feel like Did you it get was good like, grades? Were you like a bad kid? I didn't really get the best grades in school. I never like, I don't know. I, I feel like it goes back to like being a young queer kid. Like, honestly, like not to get too like emo, but it was just like, it's hard being like closeted and knowing that you're different and like feeling like nobody is seeing you. So I was like, hey, maybe they'll notice me if I do cartwheels in class and make like silly jokes. Maybe they'll notice me then. Um, but a couple of detentions later, I had to I had to clean up my act, you know. Oh, yeah, I was a good kid. Mm -hmm. Like I was so good. I got good grades. Let's like, go. When I was in high school, I studied all the time. I was like a bookworm. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. Thanks. 4.0? Uh, 4.2. Ooh, 4.2. We have that honors. We have that AP. I did not do AP. No AP. I hated AP. Got you. I actually, my senior or my junior year was like right before the summer hit. We had the opportunity to choose all of our classes. Mm. So I chosen like two AP. I did AP history, AP English, and then everything else was like honors. And I had like three extracurriculars. And I went to my guidance, Miss Putup, I talked about you. I went to, <laughs> I love you, Miss Putup. I went to my guidance counselor's office and cried. And I was like, I can't do honors. I can't do AP. Get me out of there now. And she was <laughs> like, are you sure? And I was like, I don't want to do it. And then she took me out of it. And I Still graduated with a 4.1. There we go. That's amazing. I was not about to do it. I can't do AP. Did you go to college? Yeah. You, where did you go to college? Um, I went to community for free. Cool. And now I'm going back. Oh. I took like a, like two gap years. Wait. It's, it was like a gap year. That's cool that you're going back. I want What are you to. studying? Um, I originally was studying communications, but I want to get into business. Cool. I Love feel that. like business is like easier, especially in this industry. I feel like there's, it's important to not only be talented especially when like you're in a talent-based industry but also know what the hell's going on i agree like 100%. i don't i don't want to like sit here and like not be able to understand a contract that's in front of me but i'm sure you've also like learned like along the way like through your experience also like meeting people here and like hearing about their experiences as like a musician as an artist i feel like I'm having those conversations a lot, like in the studio or like at sessions. Like I feel like it usually comes up whether it's like stuff relating to like your team or like the label or distributor, or publisher, whatever That's it is. True. It's like we're, we're able to like learn off of each other. I almost feel like my time in LA has like because I didn't study music in college. I was just an English major. Oh really? Um, mm -hmm. Did you graduate? I graduated with an English major. Um, bachelor's. A bachelor's degree, yes. Uh, and. Um, yeah, I, I knew nothing about the music industry. And so I feel like moving to LA and just like getting into it and kind of just doing it like hands on, I've learned so much. But I feel like looking back, there's also moments like near the beginning where I'm like, like, I wish I knew this because then maybe I wouldn't have like decided Done to do that. that. But yeah. it's a journey, you know. I do like making mistakes, though. Mm -hmm. Like I'd rather make the mistake and learn from it than because I feel like if I just never made a mistake, not never made a mistake in my life, but especially like in this industry, 
I feel like the only way you really can learn is from other people, but also making the same mistakes that like they've made and then like learning how they resolve those issues or like how you can resolve that issue. Because I, I feel like if you just like jump into something and you're like doing perfectly fine or you're not making mistakes, you're not really learning. I agree 100%. Or like making things that like you don't like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it like it, you learn from that. And then the things that you do like, you, you like, end up sticking with exactly. And you like so much more because it's like, where yep. did you go to college? I went to Boston University. What was that like? I Were loved you in a college. Fraternity? No, I was in an acapella group. That'll do it. <laughs> I'm dead. No, yeah, I mean, it was basically my fraternity. It was co-ed group. We were very competitive. The BU Troublemakers, shout out. Oh, gee, that's perfect. We were, you know, we were like, we were like, we always say like, we came first. Like the Troublemakers at BU. We were like, Wait, you guys were actually called the Troublemakers? We were literally called the Troublemakers. Like, and before Pitch Perfect was a movie, we were the Troublemakers. Like we started. Wait, how old are you? 28. You thought I was younger or older? I thought you were younger. Um, I thought you were like mm -hmm. 25. Yeah, no, 28. I graduated in 2017. College or co high school? Co high school 2013. <laughs> college 2017. I know. I know. I was I know, still okay. Don't not to like try to make you feel old because yeah, like I gonna... hate to like make other people feel old. But when you were graduating high school, I wasn't even out of middle school yet. Uh, dude, hey, you know. I was still actually in Catholic school in 2013. Wow. No, that that does make me feel quite old. But I'm young. We're young and wild. We're young, wild, and free. Nobody can stop us, you know? Age is just a number. Anyway. Um, <laughs> For but, some of us. Yeah, acapella. I was an acapella boy. And then by the time college was over, I was like, okay, I'm, like, really done with this. And I want to, like, start making my own songs. And so I moved to LA. Did, did you start producing your own music and then you got picked up by a label? Or how did that work? Ooh, I was actually putting out music like a couple of years before I got signed, I put out my first song in 2018, Ooh. Uh, April of 2018. And then I put out a couple of independent like EPs and projects over the years. And then essentially like I had slightly like built up a fan base, like via Spotify and that kind of stuff before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit a lot of artists were like, okay, what do we do? That's when like TikTok really started for like a lot of yeah. artists. Um, and I couldn't figure it out for a really long time. I was like trying to hop on trends. I was like trying to tease songs, but in the wrong way. And it just like wasn't working. And then I saw people like on TikTok, like just singing demos using their SM7 microphone oh. and like putting the lyrics above, like people like Avery, people yes. like, you know what I mean? Like Jessia, like a bunch of people were doing that singing in their cars. Oh yeah. And, and I also was, like, Avery did, um, she used to Avery Lynch. We yeah, love you. Hi, Avery. We, love we love you, Avery. You. Yeah. Um. She was. What did What did she do? She used to make songs like out of what people would comment. Yes. 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 That kind of stuff. And like replying to the comments. Yes. Like Jensen McRae does that. Yeah. No. There's a bunch of incredible artists who uh, during that time, you know, were really like popping off because that's how people started discovering artists via TikTok or, or when that started happening. Um. But yeah, I just started sharing demos and like putting the lyrics on the screen. And it started doing like better and better. And then I signed my deal after my song Long Distance kind of had a moment. Um, and I think I love the song so much. It's such a bop. But I also think it was like in the depths of the pandemic. And there were a lot of people in long distance relationships. Yeah. And so the timing was just like kind right. of perfect. And um, it felt like at that point I had built up enough of a foundation and a team where I like felt comfortable joining a label because I feel like. I personally think that you need to know exactly who you are as an artist before you sign to a label, because I think if you don't, it's easy for like them, them to, to shape, shape you. you. Yeah. And so I think I was like, I know who I am. I know what I want to say. They seemed like they were like super supportive of that, which they were. Um, and it felt right. So, and that was in 2020. Now it's 2023. And wait, when did you move here? 20. I moved here in 2017, the fall of 2017. Oh, so wow. it's been six years. How long have you been in LA? I'm coming up on two years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, even that, I feel like I remember seeing your posts when you had just moved to LA. That was, yeah. That was a, oh my gosh. That That's was right crazy. before the new year. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. When I first moved here, I was on a bender, but I, that's also because when I went to college, like the, I had one semester and then the second semester, it was, everything was home. Mm. So like there was no, where you could dorm, but when I was, I went to community college, there is no dorming. Right. So then when everything was online, I was stuck at home. And then when I was like, okay, I left community college, but I then transferred to an online like university. Um, well, it's online and in person, but I chose uh, like the online curriculum. Um, 
and then I moved here and I was like, holy shit, freedom. Mm -hmm. Like I'm independent. I get to do what I want. And then I was on a bender. But hey, I, we need that. I go on a bender. I have one week of the year. Well, no, wait, how many? There are two weeks in the year where I allow myself to go on a bender. Is it like specific weeks that you know? Yes. Which weeks? Halloween. Okay. The week of Halloween. Okay. And then Christmas to New Year's. Mm. Christmas to those New are Year's. And those are kind of tight together. Then you have like a lot of a big chunk of the year where you're like chilling. Yeah. Calm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like Halloween and December, like I need to go to AA. <laughs> and then like after that, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Great. Do you drink a lot? Do What's I your preferred drink? Ooh, my my preferred drink. Well, I definitely I get high more than I than I drink. <laughs> what what? You smoke? Yes, I have a song called "I Get High" on my album. Oh my god! It's literally called "I Get High." Do you prefer to smoke over? I personally, I do. Mm -hmm. Or like, or eat edibles. Um, more more edibles as of late. Is that a surprise? Yeah. Really? I'm so happy. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, that's so funny. Yeah, no, I feel like. Putting out that song on the album was like a big moment for me to kind of come forward with that part of myself. Not that I was ever like hiding it or ashamed of it, but like I like get high way more than I drink because I just it, it my body. Do you likes do it every it day? I don't do I don't get high every day anymore, but I do get high like I'd say like every week. I mean, all, well, I also I have like my nighttime bedtime gummies, you know. You know, that's but, how I am. But like I smoke before I go to bed mm, and I just like mellow out. No, I like the wild CBN. What's CBN? CBN is like it's it's like there's CBD and CBN, but the CBN like puts you to sleep and it like you stay asleep. I like highly recommend it. it's like my favorite bedtime edible. It's so good. Really? I guess I do. I guess I do take those like pretty much every night i guess i'm just like i can't actively like get high like every day like i used to be able to like in college oh, like because then i just I, I i wouldn't get anything done i can't get high during the day if that were the case like i uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. i would be dead it's funny because i wrote i get high while, as, high. while high and that worked really well um because i knew i wanted to write about it and i was like I should probably light a joint if we're going to yeah. do this. Um, but to you. Oh, you know, thank you. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of weed. I think it's like, it's less dangerous. I think it's like, I don't know. It, it, it I, I, my stomach like can't handle like getting wasted anymore. Like, I, I just also can't feel do like it. when I drink, like the days following, I genuinely want to end my life. Just feel like shit. Yeah. Like I want to end my life fully. Like I, mm. I don't want, also maybe that's because I'm on like antidepressants. Well, that could be. Yeah. And then like when I drink, it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. The next day I'm like, I like, I, I'll get like migraines every now and again, but most of the time it's just like, I don't want to like keep going on. Yeah, like no. I just want to end everything. I agree. I do like a good drink though. Like I do love wine. I like beer. Um, cocktail wine. I do like beer. I do like, I like sour beers. Is that weird? Do you not like beer? No, because I'm gay. No, but like, I like, it's like, I'm like. <laughs> no, because, no, because I'm a member Listen of the LGBT. To me. yeah. No, I'm like into like the fruity, like sour. Oh, like, like Mike's bright. Lemonade? Well, like, I do. I, I would drink a Mike's Hard Lemonade. Those are good. But like. Like a sour beer. What's like, a, a, like, what's a. Well, I mean, they're, it's just like beers that are like more like tart, fruitier. Do you prefer like, like a tart wine or sweet wine? Mm. Probably I do. I like a cab. Like I go. I like a good red wine and rosé. So like you like it tart. I like it more tart than sweet. So like dry. Drier. I don't. I'm just like mm, I'm like a wine connoisseur. Mm -mm. I'm a sommelier. See, I don't get like I can't have sweet wine because if I drink sweet wine, I'll get a headache, mm -hmm. and I hate the taste of like tart wine so what i usually do is i'll pour a few shots of tequila and then i'll get a diet coke uh, and I'm like, yeah okay. oh my god yeah easy do you Tequila's like diet great. coke i'm also like a huge diet coke drinker what's your zodiac sign Corey knows this i'm a pisces i'm a leo oh. but i also oh my smoke god. and i also love diet coke oh my i love that so, so does well my sister doesn't like diet coke as much as i she, she likes regular coke she's a leo she's a big stony july too. or august she's august august 5th When's your birthday? July 23rd. I'm the first day of Leo. You're the first Leo. I am. I'm the best. So you're you cancer. You don't need to shake your head. I know. I'm the best. You're it's a okay. cancer Leo cusp. Oh, yeah. I actually. I feel that. For the longest time, even in high school, this was before I even found out that I was on a cusp. I would tell my friends all the time that I felt like my emotions were so bipolar. And then, like, I remember one day I was talking to one of my coworkers and she was super into astrology. And I was telling her how, like, 
some days I just feel really extroverted and then other days I want to lie in my bed curled up in a ball under the blankets and like watching Netflix specials and she was like oh like when's your birthday and I was like July 23rd and she was like oh you're a cancer Leo cusp and I was like I'm not a cancer what the hell do you mean I don't I know I don't identify and she was like no like you're on a cusp and you were like caught and I'm a double Leo Ooh, my like, rising's uh, you're, in Leo you're right what's your moon Virgo Mm. And it's Virgo season now. So I'm crazy. You, I'm cuckoo. Oh, what's your? I'm a, I, I'm a Pisces sun, Cancer moon. So I'm <laughs> like I'm like actually like I'm just like an emotional mess. Can I have your hand? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm. You know I'm fine. <laughs> I'm I'm fine. We we will get through this together. Okay. Then what's your rising? I'm a Sag rising, which I actually do identify with. I think I feel like I'm the only one in my family to like move away and kind of like chase a dream kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I often feel like the odd man out, but I, I'm not afraid to like take that risk or whatever. And I feel like How that's like my sad siblings rising. Do you have? I'm a middle child. I have an older brother and a younger sister. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't have any siblings. Only child. Yeah. See, yeah. I, yeah. Our experiences were very different. Only child versus middle child. Cause the thing with middle child is you're not the youngest. You're not the oldest. You're just somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I also feel like middle children, there's like middle child syndrome where it's like when you're the oldest, it's like, see, I never had this problem. Like I, I used to have friends who were like middle children or like even like the oldest and like the oldest, it was like when they were born, they got a lot of attention and then the middle child is born and then the youngest gets away with shit. Like I, they say that like when you're an only child, you experience all three. Mm. So it's like, that's why I got good grades mm-hmm. because if I didn't, I would get not like in trouble, but it was just like, Spencer, why didn't you do well on this? Um, but I was also raised by a single mother. So I was like here, there and everywhere. Mm, that's powerful. It's ever, from everything like, You've shared, it seems like you and your mom are really close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that's my very, best very tight. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to her every single day. I actually was talking about this with my friends the other day because they were like, You talk to your mom every day? And I was like, Yeah, you guys don't. And they were like, <laughs> I mean, like, we'll text. And I was like, Oh, well, like, I'll talk to my mom on the phone every single day. Yeah. I, I, I talk to my mom almost every day, too. I'm such a mama's boy. I don't know about you. But I am like the friend to like FaceTime you or I'm like the person to FaceTime. I like won't call. I won't text. I'll just like FaceTime out of nowhere. It just like makes me feel like closer. Oh, I got my mom an iPad because I wanted to FaceTime her. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, actually. Well, I didn't buy the iPad. It was gifted to me through Amazon Prime. Oh, my friend Jocelyn. Jocelyn, I I love you. (laughs) She's someone who helped me get Beyonce tickets when Mm. I saw Beyonce. She literally... Like, she'll just, like, slip my name in places, and I'll just, like, get free, like, things. Oh, my God. And one of the things I got was, like, from Amazon Prime. It was, um, there's, like, a new show that came out. And um, I actually, crazy ass story. I <laughs> I thought I was being contacted by the Illuminati. What do you mean? Um, I, what the hell do I, oh, I'll tell you what I mean. <laughs> um, I ended up. I had, I had gone to the gym and I got back home. And when I got home, I had, I can't like, it wasn't even in a box. It was a black briefcase sitting outside my door with a whole bunch of random shit on it, like different designs. And I was like, I was like, the Illuminati wants me. I was like, this is, I was like, (laughs) they're, they're here and they want me to join them. So I get inside and I was like, holy shit. Like, wow. I was like, what is even in this thing? I was so scared to open it up. And then I opened it up and it was something from Amazon Prime and it was like Citadel. (laughs) And then Priyanka starts talking on the iPad and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like Like we're all good. It's not the Illuminati. We're fine. (laughs) That was a close one. And then I sent my mom that iPad. Mm, Good. Okay. And I already have my own. I love that. And now you can like be close. It just makes you feel closer. Yeah. It's hard being away from family. Also, we do crosswords together oh my god i forgot i have mascara on did it come wait look at me no you're good oh my god you look great honey oh wait maybe oh my god was i lying has the illuminati reached out to you yet i haven't had an illuminati experience yet i guess my time has yet to come do you believe in the illuminati I, honestly, it's not something I think Watch about. us get, like, shot. I know. Like, <laughs> like Actually, no. like, just kidding, everyone. Like, the, This is something I choose, like, not to entertain or else I will, like, spiral and, like, go in, like, a deep hole on the internet. Oh, I have done that plenty of times, but yeah. not with the Illuminati, with, like, UFOs and aliens. That, that shit I love so much. Like, I was obsessed with, like, that family in Vegas who, like, had the alien in the backyard and they, like, Did saw it. Did you see it. It was Dr. Like, Greer's? 
like like the hour conference. Oh, that too. I mean, like that was scary. How um, he basically was like, there are definitely non-human biological beings. You saw what well, I wa I got actually like astronomically high and I watched the entire three hour Dr. Greer press conference in Washington, D.C. And were you happy you were high or were you like, oh, I was like fine. Okay, but I was like, yeah. guys, I cannot make this shit up. If you watch the Dr. Greer special, it's not even a special. It was like literally a press conference in D.C. Everything that he was talking about months ago is currently happening. Really? Yeah. He literally was like, you guys are going to hear more about UFOs. It's going to be slowly pushed out into the public. Um, they're doing that because they we are going to reveal that UFOs are real. Mm. Um, and we are doing it subtly to not like cause nationwide panic. And what has been happening? It's been happening. Everything he said. Apparently, um, a lot of the UFO sightings that people experience are like man-made crafts. Um, and like scientists have reverse engineered these like man-made crafts because our government knows that UFOs exist and they know that there have been like crash landings. But how do I even put this without being shot down by a governmental drone? Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, hypothetically speaking, mm -hmm. this is like what someone else said, not me. Mm. Um, hypothetically speaking. Oh my God. That was weird. Run. I don't like this guy. <laughs> guys, I'm no, like, scary. guys, what was that? I'm scared. No, it's okay. No, we're in LA, babe. That was weird. Was that a sign? I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, if they keep shoot going. me down, shoot me down. I don't give a shit, girl. I still have to pay my taxes whether <laughs> aliens exist or not. So True. shoot me down all you want. Oh um, but apparently, like, back when who and who was... Like, this was going back to, like, Roswell, New Mexico. Wow. You know Roswell? No. Roswell, like, the most famous That's UFO not... crash. Oh, actually, I don't. Will you enlighten me? There was, like... Roswell, New Mexico was known for having, like, a very infamous UFO crash mm, site. Okay. Um, and essentially, the government covered it up by saying it was, like, a weather balloon, but it was fully a UFO. Um, and people were basically... It was just, like, they had to sign a contract where for, like, 40 or 30 years, they weren't allowed to talk about it because if they did, they both they'd get sued, whatever. Yeah. I don't really know. Mm. Um, but then 30, 40 years go by. Parents are dead, but the kids are alive. And obviously the kids know the stories because mm. their parents experienced them. And like, I forget the one guy's name, but he was like, yeah, my dad came home with like this like weird glowing object and he got it from the crash site, but we weren't allowed to talk about it because if we did, like we would get in trouble. La, 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 la. Whoa. Um, during that time when like UFO sightings were coming like more, it was a occurring more often and like there was also that sighting at capitol hill mm. um they opened up a branch of the u.s government to like study unidentified flying objects but that branch became somewhat of like a black operative government mm. which is like an inner government within our own um this is all hypothetically speaking this i'm talking is, this, this is, is all hypothetical from dr Greer's lips to our ears <laughs> and dr Greer was basically like over the years like it just became more and more difficult to basically track down what was happening with like these UFO sightings because this black operative government, they would, they're in charge of all of those things, but they're not informing the U S government about it. Interesting. And That's now scary. that there are like crafts that are being reverse engineered and there are man-made crafts, technically that's like treasonous to like the U S government because mm. it's like now you have military weapons or could be military weapons or used for the military whatever it may be and if that is the case that's treasonous because you are withholding technology from the u.s government and that's why they're being like you'll be pardoned if you come forward and like essentially show us if these yada yada yadas are but again i don't know anything about anything and what i a scary world we live in yeah <laughs> 21st century I love it We're all addicted to it I actually You want to know something I was thinking about the other day Tell me I was also just like Sitting in front of my computer Watching Outlander Because it's my new favorite show mm. um, And I was thinking to myself Like How much time do I spend In front of a computer Or, or like on my phone That like If I were to look back At my life And I was forced to watch Every single day of my life And instead of like Seeing a computer Or like the screen And like whatever I was watching It was just blank Mm. And like if I were forced to like look at my phone and it was just blank, like how bizarre is that? Like we're looking at blocks. No, literally. Like I'm looking at a block. It's so 
interesting. And even like, even like for like, I don't know, any form of entertainment, it's crazy how like you like need a phone. Like it's just like a, any business now, honestly. You need a phone. You need a phone. You need to be using social media to like sell a business. And that's how the government listens to us. I know. And that's why you need to wear tinfoil on your head because if you don't, the government can hear your thoughts. <laughs> I sound like a man that used to come into Starbucks all the time when I used to work there. <laughs> I'm dying. He used to tell me that he had to wear a special necklace to ward off the negative energies that his like microwave set off with the radioactive waves and shit. Oh and he used God. to tell me that like the trees talked to him and we were being poisoned through the air. And I was like, damn, like you might be onto something. I was gonna, I'm stop. like, maybe he's like telling the truth and maybe. nobody's listening to him. Well, I mean, like he also said that he wrote a book and he wanted to give it to me oh no oh, no nah. <laughs> like it was more like it book. wasn't like ah it was like ah <laughs> um oh, no. so everyone similarly to how the ufo and the illuminati are playing games with us we're gonna play a game <laughs> called swipe left or right yes. that was a really good segue huh band edition uh yeah so we're gonna pull out bands and then we're gonna swipe left or right on them i guess kind of like if you were on a dating app um i'm gonna let jordy go first Ooh, okay wow there's a lot in here okay okay i'm scared the Beatles. I'll swipe right on the Beatles. The classic. I mean, classic. Some of the best. Okay. Love. Hey, Paul. Call me. Um, Lemonade Mouth right all the way. Mm. Uh, that's my shit. Love. Blink-182, obviously swipe, swipe right. right. We yeah. love Blink-182. Classic. Childhood. Um, Nickelback. Look at this graph. <laughs> Look at this graph. Was it wasn't that Nickelback photograph? Yeah, but like there was like the, that oh, huge the sound. The, the, that there was, was like... that. There was that. Um, it was like <laughs> it was like one of those old vines where he like, come on, you guys Look have at to know this it. Graph. Nickelback deserves like at least some recognition in the sense that like they sold many records, you know. Yeah, they were, and good. people love making fun of them. And I'm like, I get it. Like, obviously, I get it. But I'm also like, they made they, they, they did made pretty bangers. well. They, they made you know, but like, but like now, that was more like my era. One Direction. Wait, what? Get you got that one. Well, oh, oh, yeah. One, I'm obviously swiping right because we love, we love One D. Um, Coldplay. Oh my God. I'll swipe right. Okay, we're swiping right on Coldplay. I do love Coldplay. Um, Maroon 5 I'm swiping left on Maroon 5 uh, Sunday morning, dum, dum, Yeah dum, dum, I don't think I need dum. to explain why Fall Out Boy I mean I love their music but I'm not sleeping with Anybody in that band mm. So um, I'd, I'd like swipe I'd, get, I'd, get, I'd give them a nice little like uh, Super swipe Fun fact at my bar mitzvah <gasps> I sang Wait. A Fall Out Boy song because it was a choice that made me feel like it wasn't too gay because I wasn't out yet. Bar mitzvah? I was bar mitzvah. I'm Jew. I'm, I'm Jew. <laughs> I'm a Jew. I am Jewish. Yes, I was bar mitzvah. And funny, my bar mitzvah theme was Jordy one night only, which was kind of some foreshadowing. Like it was kind of crazy. But yes. Do you know Hebrew? A little bit. Yeah. I, I was in seventh grade. I was obviously closeted, not obviously, but I was closeted. Um, and I was like, what can I sing at my bar mitzvah? That's like, I mean, I wanted to sing Hillary Duff. Like, obviously I wanted to sing like dreams are made of spice girls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or like come clean or whatever. Um, but I was like, no, I'm going to go out with follow boy because then people like, won't like, you know, no. So I sang thanks for the memories. Thanks for the memories. Oh, I know that even song. Though we so, nah. Yeah. It, tastes it was a party. Like you even sweeter. Okay. Um, one night, <laughs> yeah, what? Paramore, big swipe right, big swipe right, big, big, big. One of the remember how I said that I got swatted? Mm, yeah, that was the show I missed. Oh, that was why I got swatted when I was screaming in a hotel room. Oh, that sucks. That was actually so crazy. I answered, Wait, what do you mean you were swatted? I mean, like, what you would think swatting is, that's what I was swatted. Like, explain. I don't um, think I basically, know I found out that the show was canceled. Uh, like, that's the entire reason I was in Vegas. I found out that the show was canceled. I was with my friend Emmy. And when we found out that the show was canceled, I started screaming. 
like literally screaming in my hotel room. I didn't think anyone would hear me, but I did say I want to shoot myself. Um, and someone called the cops on us. And so um, when they showed up, like they literally like almost busted down the door and they were knocking really hard. And I actually opened the door and like, my hair was in a bun. I was in a crop top and short shorts. And when I opened the door, I had Starbucks in my hand and I said, hello. <laughs> and they were like, did someone say they had a gun? And I was like, no one said they had a gun. And they were like, we need to check your bags. So they start checking our bags and we were told to get up against the wall and they patted us down. And then when I oh looked outside, there were literal police cars and like a huge van outside just circling the building, like police cars all circling the building. And it was because of us or because of me. Oh my God. Yeah. So you were swatted. Yeah. And then you couldn't go to Paramore. Oh, well, Paramore was the reason we got swatted. Well, kind of, I was, but <laughs> like if, if the <laughs> show had not gotten canceled, we wouldn't have gotten swatted. True. Damn. Haley Williams is an icon. And I think she's like an underrated, like not like I just think she's one of the best vocalists like of our oh, generation. Oh, she's incredible. Especially if you see her like behind the scenes footage of like her in the studio without any like. No tuning. Yeah. Like, yeah, she's amazing. They, I just saw them at the forum and it was Awesome. So good. And sync. Hell yeah, I'll swipe right. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Wait, what year were you born? 95. When were you born? Oh one. Oh one. I can't. Yeah, I'm a 90s baby. And sync was like big for me when I was a kid. Fifth harmony, swipe right for sure. Yeah. I love my girls. Love my girls. That's it. That's all of them? That's it. So what was it? <laughs> what was it like growing up Jewish? <laughs> oh, is that a real question? Yeah, I love being Jewish. I love being Jewish. I love. Did the, you go to temple for like the high holidays that we call oh, it? Oh, so you were one of those people. Yeah, no, I mean, you would show up. What you would show up when it was convenient. Oh like yeah, the holidays. No, I, I was not a like go to temple all the time, but like what like for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Passover. You know, we do we go to synagogue, um, but. I will say, um, I grew up in a conservative synagogue. My dad grew up a conservative Jew. Oh. Um, there's like reform, conservative, and then orthodox. So it's kind of like the middle ground. Is an orthodox um, just like more like it's, strict and like intense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, conservative is like somewhere like in the middle. Um, and there was a point in time. It was right after I came out. So it was like in 2008. Um, my synagogue wasn't marrying gay couples at the time. And so my parents being the icons that they, that they are, they were kind of like, all right, then toodles, gonna, toodles. Yeah. Literally toodles. We're going to do our own thing. Um, and now they are marrying gay couples, which is great. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I felt, you know, I feel like Judaism is, is, you know, culturally it's, it's, I'd say, uh, you know, not a, a bad place to be queer. I felt really accepted by my family and my community. And so that was like really nice. But yeah, I love being Jewish. I love celebrating the holidays. I love like the culture. I love the traditions. It's fun. I yeah, was raised love... like heavy Catholic. Mm. Yes. Not the vibe. I used to like go to church. Well, first of all, I went to Catholic school. Then I was an altar boy on Saturdays. And then when I would go to my grandma's house, I'd go to church on Sunday. Mm. So also we had church during school. So like every Thursday I had to go to mass in school. Then every Saturday it was like altar serving. And then every Sunday, if I like was an altar serving, I would go. And then when you get confirmed, you have to go to church. Babe, that is like so much. Do you remember growing up and like learning that like, like were they like homosexuality is a sin and it's bad and all that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean like when I went to Catholic school, I have mentioned this before on here. I was literally taught that if Hitler was sorry on his deathbed, he would go to heaven. Like if he gave himself over to God, but like if a gay person isn't, they're going to hell. Wow. Like I that's was so. And, up. Oh yeah, I know. And that's why, like, especially when I was being confirmed, I told my mom, I was like, I don't want to be confirmed. Mm. I was like, I don't want to go or be in a church that it. I'm not murdering anyone. <laughs> Like, I'm not going about murdering people. I Like, everybody sins. I get it. But, like, if being gay is the thing that condemns me to hell, s*** be it. Mm -hmm. And I even, like, I remember when I was about to be confirmed, my mom was like, just do it for your grandma. So I got confirmed for her because um, she's dead. But the minute I was confirmed, I was like... Dunzo. I had not... I haven't been to, like, church, step foot in a church since the eighth grade when I got confirmed. Yeah, that... I... 
I can't imagine that. I like I even though I said that like at the time like my synagogue wasn't marrying gay couples, like I don't really like like Judaism like they, they don't push that kind of That's what like narrative. sucks especially like in like Catholicism and Christianity. I know it's not like all Catholic churches and not all like Christian churches, but like even when I was growing up, what sucked the most was like all of my friends, we were I went to Catholic school. So we were all raised and taught the same beliefs growing up. Right. And then it was like, fortunately, thank God, um, a lot of my friends that like when I like when we all got into high school and went to public school and we all like dispersed pretty much. Uh, there are a lot of my friends or I still have a lot of friends from Catholic school that like when I first came out they were like, we think you're going to go to hell, but like, we still love you. And now they're like, no, we don't mm. like we like, and it's, that's what, that's what it is. Like you as a person, it's like you are raised in the church and then you have to form your own opinions on your own. I feel like I grew out of it faster though, because I was gay. Mm. So it's like when I'm being taught, like gay people are going to hell. I'm like, why though? Because there are people who commit mass murder and mass genocide. And you're saying that they get to go to heaven because they're sorry. Mm -hmm. And because I'm not sorry for loving someone, I have to go to hell. Totally. Like that's whack. And then like, I know a lot of people now who are like, I went to Catholic school with them. They're now coming out yep. as like gay or this and that. And it's like, you know what? I hope to God. They're like, I'm sorry. Like if I die and I get up to heaven and God's like, no, I'm going to be like, I don't want to be there anyway. I'm going to be like, okay, we're at Lady Gaga. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> like I'll real. go straight to hell then. Yep. I'm so supportive of anybody who feels like, you know, they have a faith or like they believe in whatever they want. Like, I'm so about that. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like into my astrology charts. Like I'm about like having something to like believe, believe in, to in. look at the universe, whatever it is, a religion. But I think it's when you start pushing it onto other people and when you start demonizing, demonizing people. people for simply being who they are. I mean, it's like, it's f***ed up. And that's what's also really scary, especially with like Catholicism and the Christian religion is how much it influences and impacts our government. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, there is not, there is not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that the reason they are passing these anti-trans laws and these anti-trans bills is simply because of their religious beliefs and i thought there was supposed to be a separation of church and state where's the separation there isn't and they back up their views and they back up their beliefs by like spewing out pretty much hatred yep. and instead of being like oh we believe this because the bible says that they say no these people are predators right no you got like i'm sorry i cannot tell you how many people i know that have been personally assaulted by priests, youth ministers, youth pastors, youth leaders. And you're going to sit here and say that a drag artist reading to kids in a library <laughs> is, is a, a predator? Threat. Yep. When was the last time a kid died because of a drag queen? Never. When was the last time a kid was killed by a gun? Probably yesterday. Yeah. So it's just like... That's what's like so disheartening, especially like now. But I'm just really glad that we're in a generation where it's like... I feel like this generation especially is more like there are more people who support like gay rights and the right of women to have full like bodily. Uh, what is it? The right of autonomy. women to have like, yeah, like full uh, bodily autonomy and be able to control their own bodies. And I feel like the conservatives are very few and far between in this generation, but I've still met them and it's terrifying. No, it's, 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 it's very weird to see us moving forward in so many ways and also like not, you know, it's weird. It's like we're moving backwards, but at the same time, I also feel like so much progress has been made, especially as a queer artist. The fact that I even could be signed to like a major label and for a major label to back me as an openly gay artist like singing songs about boys and like sharing my real honest queer experiences like that's mm. so cool and I'm so grateful for that and there's so many other queer artists out there right now who are killing it who I mean are bigger than ever who I love so much and it's it's a really cool thing to see um but I think we have a lot of work to do and we it's our it's our responsibility to use our platforms for the greater good so let's change let's change the world all right everyone before we leave, do you want to tell everyone your social media handles, anything you're working oh on? Ooh, well, 
I just put out an album. It's called Boy. There's 12 songs. I'm very proud of it. Um, you can hear songs of mine, like Story of a Boy that you may have heard floating around TikTok. Oh, I've seen your videos. Oh, you've seen the Story of a Boy videos? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, they're so beautiful. I love it so much. Um, Octopus lover. Oct oh my God, Jake, Jakey. You saw that from last night? Yeah, I did. I, was I literally like was going to bed and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah, no, it's, it's been fun for sure. Um, and yeah, no, there's an album that's out. Go stream my album. Uh, you can find me at Jordy Music um, on Instagram and Twitter, not X, but Twitter. Um, and I am Jordy on TikTok. And yeah, stay tuned, making new music, so. Well, everyone, if you don't know where to find me, you can find me as Spenswa on all social media platforms except Snapchat because some bitch stole my username. Um, so you can find me as Spence Moi on Snapchat. Uh, if you guys didn't know, um, hopefully you do know by now, but if you didn't, uh, new episodes of I'm Literally Screaming release every single Thursday on all audio streaming platforms. But if you want to see this happening live and in person and you want to see Jordy's cool pants or this awesome merch that I have right here, oh my God, go love. to the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel and subscribe, uh, like, comment who you want to see on here next. Also, if you like the merch in this video, make sure to click the link down below in the description of the YouTube video um, and get some. Uh, uh, we love your support. We love you guys. If you don't subscribe, like, or comment, that means you hate me, and I really don't like that. I feel like we should be spreading the love, and I love you guys enough to say it out loud, and even though you can't or may not be able to say it directly to my face, you can show me by subscribing, liking, and commenting. All right, everyone. I love you so much. Until next time, mwah!